Welcome to the first tutorial for the Travel Time Platform official plugin for QGIS by Olivier, a contributor to QGIS. In today's session, we will cover the basics of the plugin. We'll look at installation and setup, have a quick overview of the three different features, and take our first steps with the plugin. This tutorial is meant to be an introduction before diving further. You should be able to follow if you're completely new to QGIS, but you should still be able to learn a few things if you know your way already. First, we're going to start QGIS if you don't have it already. Go to the QGIS.org website. Spot the Download Now button and then choose your version. If you're on Windows, I suggest you take the standalone installer, which is much easier to install. And you can pick either version 3.6, which has more features, or version 3.4, which may be a bit more stable. It won't make any difference for our usage. If you're on Mac OS X, you have just a choice between version 3.6 or 3.4. Just click on the button once you've chosen your version and wait for the download to finish. Once your download is finished, just open your download folder and double click on the installer. This will be a very typical installation, so just follow the instructions clicking OK every time you're prompted. So basically you can just click Next, Agree, click Next to install it in the default location. You don't need any data sets for our use, and so you can install. OK, so when the installation is done, you can just close all the windows, go to the Start menu, look for QGIS and start the software. Once QGIS has started, we'll be able to install the plugin right from within QGIS. Just go to the plugin menu, choose Manage and Install Plugins. And in this dialog in the search bar, start typing the name of the plugin. Select it and just click the install button. If the installation has succeeded, you should now see a pop up appear on your screen. You can just tick the Don't Show Again checkbox so that it doesn't appear anymore and then click OK to close it. We need to do one last step before being able to use it, but as you can already see, there is a new toolbar that's appeared on the top here, which is the Travel Time Platform tool. On that toolbar, click on the Configuration button, and this will open the main plugin configuration dialog. So this plugin actually uses an API or web service, and to be able to use it, you need to register for an app ID and API key. You can do this for free by clicking on the Get a Free API Key button. So click here, this will open a web page where you have a very simple registering form. Just enter your first name, your last name and your email address. Hit Get a Key and in a matter of minutes you'll get an email providing the API key and the app ID. Once you've got that, switch back to QGIS and enter the app ID and API key. Then just click OK and you're done. You can start using the plugin. OK, so I'll give you a quick overview of the plugin. So as you already saw, the plugin adds this new toolbar here at the top and provides access to all the features of the plugin. Alternatively, you can also access those features using the plugin menu and the travel time platform entry. And the third place where the plugin appears is in the QGIS Processing Toolbox. You can see it at the very bottom here. The toolbar also adds this small button, Show the Toolbox, which also shows the Processing Toolbox but pre-filtered to show only the travel time related algorithms. So the main feature of the plugin consists of three algorithms the time map algorithm, the time filter algorithm, and the routes algorithm. Each of these comes in three versions. The easiest being here in the toolbar, which are not tools but can be used by clicking on the map. 
Then you have the simplified ones, which provide simplified dialogues, and then the advanced ones, which will allow you to harness the power of the API. The plugin also adds a few other goodies. First, the geocoding algorithms, which allow you to translate textual addresses to geographical points. And the reverse geocoding, which does the opposite, assigning textual addresses to geographical points. The plugin also adds this button, Add a Background Layer, which you can use to quickly access the background tiles here in the browser. Just drag and drop them on the map to have an easy background. As you may have noticed when you click on it, you have a message here which indicates that you could get more of the layers here depending on your API keys. If you need this feature, you can just request it and show it again. Click on the background layer and just follow the queue to request access to those additional parts. Just a warning, you will at some point when you use the plugin see errors like this that says you've exceeded your request limit. And this is because with the free API key, you have a request limit of around 10 queries per minute. So whenever you see this message, it's normal. Just wait for a minute or so before you do additional requests. Okay, so let's get started using the tool. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna pretend that I own a pizzeria and that I'm thinking of setting up a new delivery service. So I'd like to visualise the area that my delivery team would be able to cover by bicycle around my pizzeria. To get started, we just add, as we saw just before, a background layer. So click on it, on the Add Background Layer button, you will see the available XYZ tiles here. As you see, I have a few more than you probably. So as we saw just before, if you like those, you can also request access to them using the small link we saw before. Just drag and drop it on the main canvas to add it. Now using the scroll wheel, you can zoom in. And my pizzeria is located in London. So I'll find a point and say my pizzeria is located here. So as I just said, we'll want to know the area that the delivery team can cover from here. So just activate the QuickTime Map tool. I click on it, and using the small arrow, you can quickly configure it. So let's say we want to see what area we can cover by cycling for 15 minutes around my pizzeria. Once you're done, just click on the point and zoom out. You can see the polygon that my delivery team would be able to cover. You can change the settings here, for instance if we did the delivery by car, we'd get a slightly smaller polygon. And you could use the same tool in a different way, you could for instance also see from where it's possible to reach your pizzeria by public transport and let's keep it to 15 minutes and you see each time the polygon dramatically changes. One very important thing to notice is this small icon here next to the layers. This means that the output layer is actually a temporary layer, it won't be saved with the project. So, if you close your project, you'll lose this result. At any point, if you want to save those results, you need to do an additional step. Right-click on it and choose here Make Permanent. For now, since we're just playing around, we'll keep it like this. So, from our quick analysis, it seems that the best means of transport, the best transportation type for delivery, is the bicycle. So, for now, we'll just remove those two layers and keep only one. We're also going to rename it by right clicking on it and rename and call it Delivery Zone Bike. I'm just going to close the browser here to get a bit of space on my screen. Now I would like to know where I could advertise. 
I was thinking maybe I could put some ads at nearby bus stops to invite the customers to pass by at the pizzeria when they come out of work. Of course, there's no real point in advertising at bus stops that would be too far away, as people probably wouldn't walk much more than 10 minutes from a bus stop to the pizzeria. So, to do this analysis, we'll first need the data. We need the points that are located around my pizzeria. So to get this type of data, I suggest you use the quick OSM plugin. So it's another plugin that's not related to travel time, but we'll install it. So again, we go to the plugin manager. We look for quick OSM and exactly like we did before, we install it like this. Once the installation's done, you can close the plugin manager. And again, this plugin also adds a new toolbar, which you can see here and which allows us to use it. Let's open the Quick OSM dialog. And this is the main Quick OSM dialog, which is a really nice way to get data into your projects. It downloads the data from the OpenStreetMap database. This data is open data, meaning that you can use it in any type of product, as long as you mention or credit the OpenStreetMap's contributors on your publication. So, we're looking here for public transport and stop position. If you want to know more about this key and value, just click on the button here and you can get a description. And we also want to limit the search to the canvas extent because we don't want to download data from all around the world. In the advanced section here, which you may need to unfold, we'll just uncheck lines multi-line strings and polygons so that you're sure that everything we get back from the OSM is only points. And then click Run Query. So, this may take a little bit of time, depending on your connection. OK, once the query is successful, you can just close the window and you'll see a new layer containing all the stop positions that were visible in the map canvas. Make sure that when you do this, that your window is not zoomed out too much, because if it is, you'll get too many points, and this may cause some problems afterwards. So we'll zoom back in again, and now let's say, OK, I want to find out which of those bus stops are less than 10 minutes away by foot from my pizzeria. So I use the time filter algorithm and change the settings just like we did before, walking 15 minutes. Before I click on my pizzeria, I need to make sure to select this layer because if I don't have a point layer selected, I'm not able to use it. So you need to first select a point layer in the legend here. Then you can enable this and now I just click my pizzeria. This may take a little bit of time again. And once it's done, you'll get a new layer, an output layer, that distinguishes between the bus stops that are reachable or unreachable. So you can quickly see which stops you need to focus on for your advertising campaign. Just like before, I'll rename this layer and call it Nearby Bus Station, just so that I remember what it actually was. And for now, I'll just toggle them off make things look a bit more clean. Then the next thing I want to do is to print out some maps showing the directions from some well-known places in London to my pizzeria to help customers find a place. So I use the last of the three algorithms, which is a quick route one. And click on it to enable it. And just as before, I can look at the settings here and leave them like this for now. And I'll pick a place in the city. Let's take, I want to go from here to my pizzeria here. Click and you see I get the best route time-wise to get to the pizzeria. You can see also it indicates for each segment which means of transport was used. 
So you can see you start walking and then you take the tube and then you walk again, you take a bus, then you walk up to the pizzeria. You can use the same tool for much bigger distances. Let's try from somewhere in Birmingham to my pizzeria again. Click and I got the whole route from Birmingham. This concludes our first tutorial. So we had a quick look at the map tools provided by the Travel Time Platform plugin. I invite you to continue watching this series because in the next one we'll have a look at the algorithm here from the Processing Toolbox, which really is a much more powerful way to use the Travel Time API. And in the meantime, if you want to find additional help, you can click on the Help button here, which will open the online help page, giving access to the same tutorial you're watching but in written form. As well as the reference manual, you'll also find links to the issue trackers in case you hit some bugs. There's also a contact us link where you can provide feedback and a link to the QGIS help resources in case you need a bit more information about how to work with QGIS. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.